Christmas. Starting? Okay, great. So I realize we're in the deadly post-lunch digestion window, but we'll try to keep things uh, interactive. Um, so I'm Bill Fischoffer. I'm with the uh, Lenaro Networking Group, and I appreciate Shaban's uh, invitation to speak to you this afternoon a little bit about open data planning, which if you think of DPDK as Guinness, we're sort of a craft beer. Uh, <laughs> So what I'd like to talk about uh, this afternoon quickly is just some requirements that motivated and drive the ODP project, um, and then talk a little bit about what ODP is in terms of its components and structure, and finish up a little bit talking about some of the ODP sponsorship and governance model, which I think is of interest to uh, the DPDK community as well. I know that uh, Jim is, uh, is hosting some discussions uh, later this afternoon on, on that. So the first uh, requirement that uh, the origins of ODP is basically started in early 2013, um, which uh, in DBK was already several years old, but it just started uh, you know, becoming open source at that point. Um, but a lot of the stakeholders within the R networking group got together and took a look at you know, the, the uh, environment and came up with a number of requirements. and, and decided that there were really three things that we're looking for. One was the ability to support application portability across diverse ISAs and system architectures. And by that we mean things like core counts, memory organizations, hardware, integrated hardware capabilities, etc. cetera, um, which especially in the SOC space tend to be very disparate. Uh, and secondly, uh, be able to exploit hardware specific acceleration and offload capabilities without application effort. Uh, so by that, I mean if you look at some of the capabilities that are available in SOCs, they include things like hardware buffer, packet management, uh, integrated I.O. that is not using a PCIe, uh, hardware parsing and classification of packets, uh, hardware scheduling and flow ordering, uh, hardware egress traffic shading, QoS, etc. So these are sort of things that you typically find in network SOCs which are not present on general purpose processors, although uh, obviously, the capabilities of, of hardware evolves over time. And the third thing, especially in the uh, ARM ecosystem, uh, is the requirement to support scalability to many core architectures without application redesign. So really what we'd like to have is application designs that are fundamentally unchanged whether they're running on 440 or 400 cores. Um, and that basically motivates the event model structure that, uh, that, that ODP basically promotes as, as its main programming paradigm. Um, although it does support poll mode for those who, who want to do that as well. So in order to do this, we, we basically divided the task into three logical pieces. And so when you say, well, what is, is ODP? It's really three different things. Uh, the first thing it is, is it's an abstract API specification. And we sort of take our inspiration from OpenGL in that. Uh, 20 years ago, uh, the graphics world was also fairly fragmented. You had a lot of people doing uh, graphics programming, and you had a lot of graphics hardware engines, but there was a lot of a need for some commonality across that. And so OpenGL came along and said, hey, here's a abstract specification that can be used for graphics programming that is independent of the hardware and will allow you to run across all these different hardware engines. And lo and behold, uh, as soon as people started adopting that, then the hardware guys started in optimizing and innovating to, to the APIs. So you get that dual layer uh, innovation that, uh, that Andy was discussing this morning. Behind the specification, though, is multiple independently maintained implementations of the ODP API. And this is really key. Um, ODP is not a uh, a single uh, implementation. There are multiple implementations behind the, uh, the abstract HPI specification, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then the third piece is a validation test suite, uh, which basically is how you verify that an implementation, in fact, uh, conforms to the specification. So we talk about these in, in a little more detail. The uh, specification is, is open source open contribution in BSD3 license. Basically, everything that uh, we do publicly within ODP is, is, uh, follows this, this model. Uh, it is vendor and platform neutral. 
uh, it's application centric. So it covers the functional needs of data plane applications without saying how those uh, functions are performed. Um, and is basically designed to ensure portability by specifying the functional behavior of ODP. Uh, it's defined <laughs> jointly and openly by application writers and platform implementers. So this is really key. Uh, in order for an ODP, uh, for an API to be adopted as part of ODP, what we'd like to see is multiple applications saying, this is an API that solves a real need for us, and we'd like to have multiple platforms saying, we can implement that efficiently on our platform. Um, and it's architect to be implemented on a wide range of platforms efficiently as a result of that. And the governance of this is sponsored and maintained by the uh, Lenaro Networking Group, which I'll talk about uh, later on. From implementation standpoint, we have multiple independently maintained implementations of the ODP API. Um, and the reason for this is that we, have, we believe that there really is uh, one size does not fit all. Uh, because there are widely differing internals among platforms and we don't want to have the specification tell a platform how it needs to uh, behave at a very low level detail. We'd like to say what it needs to provide in terms of function but not necessarily how it needs to provide that function. Um, so anyone can create an ODP implementation tailored to their platform. And the distribution and maintenance of each implementation is as however the owner wishes. So in particular, uh, implementations can be either open or closed source as business needs determine, and we have both. Uh, some, some choose to be open source, some choose not to. Uh, and they also can have independent release cycles and service streams, which simplifies things for if a uh, given vendor has a bug fix that they want to get out for their platform, well, they can do that on their own schedule without having to coordinate that with the rest of the world. Um, and it allows, as I said, the, the, the real purpose here is to allow hardware and software innovation in how ODP APIs are implemented on each platform. So um, just saying, well, you can go off and write an ODP application <coughs> implementation would be very useful in itself. So one of the things that, that ODP also does is distributes and maintains a number of reference implementations of ODP, which are designed to serve as a starting point for people. So all of these reference implementations are again open source, open contribution, BSD3 licensed, and they're designed to provide easy bootstrapping of ODP onto new platforms. Uh, implementers are free to borrow code and tailor it as needed for their platforms, and they retain full control uh, of their own implementations, whether or not they derive from a reference implementation. Uh, finally, there's the validation test suite. And the purpose, this, this is synchronized with the ODP API specification level, which so for instance, currently we are at uh, ODP version 1.3, that's the most recent uh, release. And so there's a validation test suite which is synchronized with that. Uh, this is maintained and distributed by LNG. And again, the test suite itself is, uh, is also open source with contribution and BSD3 license. Uh, we're using the C unit test framework uh, for uh, uh, for the validation suite. And um, the, uh, the, this really is the key to ensuring application portability across the ODP implementations because what it does is it tests that implementations of ODP conform to the specified functional behavior of the APIs. And these can be run at any time by both users and vendors to validate implementations of ODP. So we sort of follow a self-certifying uh, methodology that uh, anyone can say I have an ODP implementation uh, that implements this particular level of the spec, and there's this independent validation suite which anyone can use to truth test that assertion. Um, this is just an example, a couple of uh, examples of some of the implementations that are currently available. Uh, Linux Generic is is the one that the, the main one that's distributed with the uh, ODP Git repository, uh, although. Uh, right now, we're in the process of looking to split up the Git repositories to make it clear that the implementation and the APIs really are separate. Uh, so more on that uh, later this year. Um, Linux Generic is uh, a pure software implementation. It's designed to run any Linux kernel. Um, it's just a functional implementation and not a performance target, uh, although it can have, uh, particularly in the I.O. area, I mean, it uses raw sockets for I.O., which is functional but not terribly interesting from a performance standpoint. Because it only uses Linux, uh, Linux APIs, uh, it, it basically can run on any Linux kernel. 
Um, and uh, the, the whole purpose of this is to give people a starting point. You can basically go to a brand new architecture and be up and running with an ODP implementation within a couple of hours. It's usually pretty simple. Uh, we do have an implementation called ODP DPDK, uh, which is uh, essentially implementing ODP uh, for x86 using DPDK as a software acceleration lighter. So essentially, a DPDK is a sort of an SDK that, that uh, implements the, uh, the ODP APIs. Uh, NetMap is another one which is sort of experimental, but uh, there doesn't seem to be a lot of interest in that right now. We have a number of our SFC partners which are currently uh, shipping uh, ODP implementations. Texas Instruments has one for their Keystone 2 SOC. Freescale has for their QRIQ uh, series SOCs, both uh, Power and ARMv8. Cavian has implementations out for both their MIPS 64 Octeon and their newer Thunder uh, ARMv8 system. And uh, most recently we had Calray, which is a small French company, uh, which is not an LNG network company, has uh, one for their uh, MPPA SOCs, which has a proprietary architecture. Uh, well, those, they're, 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 they're not officially announced yet, although we did, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we did have a, a set of demos in, uh, in San Francisco at our Connect conference, and we had uh, Easy Chip demonstrating their Tyler platform. We also had Huawei and Broadcom demonstrating implementations. So there's a, there's a bunch of more that are in, in development. Um, finally, for, from a sponsorship and governance standpoint, um, the Lenara Networking Group and its 13 member companies are the sponsors and upstream maintainers of ODP. Uh, so this is the list of all the companies. Uh, some names are, are familiar, some may not be. Uh, but a lot of the companies in this room are, are members of, uh, of LNG. Um, LNG membership is open to all, fees do apply. Um, ODP is fully open source and open contribution. Um, and the other thing is all ODP design work is carried out in public in both open face-to-face -face meetings and weekly public architecture calls and on our mailing list. So I'd like to thank you. Yes, I, well, we'll, we'll, have, we'll use the two minutes for questions. <laughs> uh, anyway, for more information, there is an ODP website, and uh, you're please welcome to join us on our uh, weekly public architecture calls. There are Tuesdays at 1500 UTC. Just go to meetings.opendataplane.org. Yes. From the previous slide, uh, and, and this, you say it's open, but I understood that there was a cost to be, to be part. So well, it, cost so, so, here, here, so the deal is, it is, it is. We're op we're an open source project, okay. And so we have had many contributions from people who are not LNG members. I mean, CalRay and, and EasyChip have have made major contributions to the code base. So it runs just like any other open source project in that regard. The uh, advantage of LNG membership is that we're the maintainers and upstream and sponsoring body uh, behind the project. So if you want to have a greater voice in terms of setting overall project direction and priorities, that's one of the things that, that members do. Does it mean that companies like Calray, if they don't pay, they can't have the voice? Uh, on the no, no. It's a, I mean, I said it, 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 it's a question of degree. So I mean, Cal, Calray and, and others have a, uh, you know, have, have, have a voice the same as any other open source project. Uh, but in the case of, of the, uh, one of the concerns that I think a lot of companies have, that SOCs, is that they, they want to have a greater level of participation in the overall direction of the project, and that's one of the things that the governance uh, structure allows. I think there's an overlap. The LNG actually has uh, another arm to it, which is not ODP, which is kernel work and various other things. Yeah. And so many of these companies want to influence that work, and that's not not really ODP related, but the, the governance model flips, you know, covers both sides. That's true. Anything else? Um, there is an ODP implementation on top of DPDK. Yes, there is. And you you said uh, you support. Intel x86 with this implementation, mm -hmm. but now in DPDK you have also IBM ProRate, uh, Intel GX, and we, we, ARM we, we support the implementations that are available on dpdk.org. So you have the support for IBM ProRate, ARM, and when when if, if there's if there's there's demand for that, then yes. Okay, that's great. Okay, thank you very much.